a young lady from Seattle who, who's in the video business kept writing to me and asking if she could interview me or if I could send her pictures of me and my children and so forth because she was making a little film. And uh, we saw the film at the Telluride Film Festival last year for the first time. And the title was An Accidental Mountaineer, which was a perfect title because when she interviewed me and asked me all the questions, it was apparent that my becoming a mountaineer and being the first woman to climb the Kennedy was a total accident. I mean, it was nothing I planned to do. Uh, okay, we, we've got to get to uh, Mount McKinley here, or to Denali, wasn't it, pretty soon? <laughs> <laughs> How are we getting to Denali? Well, I got involved with McKinley, or Denali, in 1936. The, Dr. Rovner of the National Geographic wanted to know if I could make a trip for the National Geographic that was not too expensive, but that would be noteworthy. So I said, nobody has ever taken large format aerial photographs of Mount McKinley, the highest peak in North America. We flew in a Lockheed Electra, exactly the same plane that Amelia Earhart disappeared in. And we made a half a dozen flights over and around McKinley with my big eight by 10 inch camera. And I think this is the first time I saw the mountain. Uh, having seen Everest, uh, I can say with vehemence that, that this is uh, much better than Everest. And it was obvious that he wanted me to go. And it sounded pretty exciting. So right after we were married, I went off on our first expedition. And that turned out quite well. I, I got to the top and found it was a lot of fun. And then the wall came along and uh, Brad said we better do one more because I'm going to the war, may have and never have another opportunity. So we climbed Mount Hayes that summer, and that was a much harder climb. We got, and that was the first ascent. One of the questions that everybody asks me is how did I get into train, how did I train? And I burst out laughing and said, wheeling a baby carriage. But I didn't know any, I had no female friends who cared a bit about physical exercise. And so I was kind of into mountain climbing, but then I had children. Never thought of it again until this McKinley thing came up. And then that meant living, leaving three kids to go and do this. And I didn't really want to do that. But this movie company put so much pressure on me, I and Brad. And Brad said, you can do it. It's not, very, it's not that cold, it's not that high, and so forth. So off I went, knowing that he wasn't hoping that he wasn't desiring to get rid of me at that point. Well, they were all very supportive. So off I went. And famous mountain explorer, Bradford Washburn. and Mrs. Washburn, herself an expert mountaineer. We landed on Muldrow Glacier at about 5,000 feet, and we landed on the glacier at the end of March, not the middle of May. So we were on the mountain a long time. Barbara climbed it on the 6th of June, but we had a wonderful view from the top. Absolutely gorgeous day without a breath of wind. This is the capstone of a continent as high as you can go and still say, this is America. I got a, tele a few years ago, I got a telephone call while I was washing the breakfast dishes, and the man said, I'm a reporter from Alaska, and I just want to tell you that a young woman has just soloed Mount McKinley and we want to know what you think about it. Well, I didn't have a moment to think and I said, the poor thing, she missed all the fun. And the man said, well, what do you mean by that? And I said, well, to me, the fun of the trip was the companionship of all the other guys with me and the sociability around the primus stove at night discussing interesting subjects. It certainly wasn't plugging up the mountain one foot after another and getting out of breath. 